Hello my modeling friends and welcome to another video. Today I would like to show you how I use oil paints to add some interest and a bit more color to my scale models. Now the first thing I'd like to say is that this technique might not suit everyone's modeling tastes, but also there are many different ways to achieve the same thing. This is just a method I like to use personally. So with that in mind, let's get on with the video. To start off with, you will need a few items. A model, of course. Make sure the model has been painted with the base colors, had the decals applied, and has a good coat of gloss varnish that's completely dry and cured. Next, a piece of cardboard. This will be used as the mixing dish or tray or whatever the correct artistic name is. Some brushes. Again, these don't have to be expensive, but I would recommend a small round brush for painting on the oil paint, as well as a flat brush for the blending. You'll also need some kind of thinner to clean the brushes afterwards. You can use cheap white spirits or expensive and fancy artist odorless enamels. It's up to you. Oil paints. You don't have to spend a lot on these. In fact, the ones I have here are very cheap and came in a set for around five or six pounds. A set is quite good as you usually get the most useful colors, but you can of course mix other colors yourself. You can also buy modeling specific oils, such as these Abteilung 502 oils, but again, it isn't a requirement of this process to have these. I would also recommend some paper towel and some kind of glove while you are handling the model. So first things first, put some of the oil paints onto the piece of cardboard. I usually choose three or four colors, including black and white, so that I can mix up lighter or darker tones of whatever base color I'm using, which in this case is burnt umber. Next up, put on your glove. It might sound obvious, but this will avoid any nasty fingerprints on your model, and it also helps avoid rubbing oil paints all over your face, or somewhere worse. <laughs> Don't ask me how I know this. Now for the oily paint goodness. Take your small round brush and dip it into your chosen color, being careful not to overload the brush too much. Carefully paint along panel lines or anywhere you want this effect to be applied. Remember, don't overdo it. Oil paint is very pigment heavy and a little goes a very long way. It's best to do this in small sections as sometimes oil paint can dry out a little and it does become harder to work with. Once you have your section painted with oils, grab your flat dry brush and we can begin blending. Make sure the blending brush is completely dry. If it does have any thinners on it, it will just wipe away the oil paint without blending it and that's not what we want. Using an up and down motion, gently brush it along the panel line or area you want the effect and you'll see it start to soften and blend the paint into the underlying surface. Also occasionally wipe your blending brush onto some paper towel so that you don't get build up of oil paint in the bristles. Once you have your first section complete, stand back and bask in the glory of your creation for you are an artist. But seriously, put the model down and stand back from it as sometimes it's good to see the model as a whole so that you get a good idea of how the effect is taking shape. So often I focus in on one area only to realize that I've overdone it or there's not quite enough somewhere else. It's not a deal breaker and it's easy to fix, but I do find doing this helps. Here I'm adding some pure black paint nearer the wing root, but as you can see, it's rather stark. Colors like black are very powerful and I would recommend only using darker tones rather than pure black itself. So basically, don't do what I've done here. If you do want to use black, however, remember that a little goes a really long way. You can, of course, go back over with another color, which will help blend the black and tone it down a bit. The best bit about doing all this over a gloss coat instead of a matte one, if you decide you don't like a particular area or just completely hate what you've done, you can simply wipe away all the oil paint with some paper towel and a little thinners, allowing you to redo that section or start again. Here I'm redoing the oil paints on the bow fighter, making things a little more subtle than the first attempt. Using oils on a model can be daunting, especially if it's your first time. Take it slow and have plenty of breaks if needed. The underside of this model had a much lighter color, so I was really careful not to overdo it and use the oil paint a little more sparingly. Now I'm adding some small dots of white oil paint to help highlight these areas and provide a little more contrast. Here I'm using a stippling motion on the flat surface as well as gently brushing to help blend the color. 
As I said at the start, I think this is more of an artistic look, but it is one I quite like. You can also add a little white paint over decals to make them look a little faded and worn. I think if you're making the rest of the model look worn, it's likely that the markings would follow suit. Also, don't forget you can use this method on any part of the model, including engines, weapons, and even propellers. So that's the oils complete on the top and bottom of this aircraft, and now it's time to dry them and get ready for the final gloss coat to seal it all in. To aid in the drying time, I'm using a cheap heat gun which I bought from Amazon. Just be careful to keep moving the heat gun and not let it sit on one spot, unless of course you're going for that, it just flew into the sun look. Once everything is dry, and I'd recommend waiting at least a day or two, it's time to seal in all your hard work with a varnish. Once again, I'm using AK's Intermediate Gauzy Agent, sprayed at around 18 psi through my Iwata Revolution CR with a 0.5 mm needle. I like to use a gloss varnish to seal in oils, as I find it a bit harder wearing than a matte varnish, especially if you're gonna handle the model afterwards. Then once the gloss varnish is dry, I follow it up with the matte varnish for that final matte look. So here's my finished model. I did add some oil and fuel stains after the matte varnish was dry, but that's about it. If you found this video useful, go ahead and hit that like button and leave a comment if you have any questions. And last of all, if you would like to see more content from me in the future, go ahead and subscribe as I do have some cool builds coming up. So thank you again for watching and as always, happy modeling. Ha <laughs> ha.